But uh, right off the bat, to get it, um, just go to the Asset Store, and you can find that in the tab inside Unity Asset Store, and just go down to 3D Game Kit. All right. Now you don't want to get the full kit. The full kit's awesome, but it's like eight gigs. It takes forever. Um, there's tons of stuff in there, but all the core stuff you need is in 3D Game Kit Lite. So it doesn't have all the the environment stuff and everything that's in 3D Game Kit. But in 3D Game Kit Lite, it has all the core components or functionality you need to build a level. So they kind of stripped out all the extra stuff and just left in the core pieces you need. So we're going to use 3D Game Kit Lite. <clears throat> That. And it's free. And we'll just import it. And you'll notice it says importing a complete project will overwrite uh, your current settings. That's fine. This particular project has a lot of settings in addition to um, what Unity has that it puts in there. So you always want to make sure you, you start, if it's a framework like this, you start with it, you don't add it in later and stuff like that. Um, one of the things I really dig about this package is, and when we get into uh, replacing the characters, is the character's actually not um, humanoid. You know, people really get stuck in the whole, oh, I have to use the, the humanoid rigs for everything I do in the Unity. And it's not the case, especially if you want to do more animated characters and stuff that there's really custom that you've made in like uh, Maya or other programs. Um, it uses a generic rig for the main character, um, which really I think uh, adds a lot more to the game. It adds a lot more style, um, and the character moves a lot differently. There's a lot of benefits I feel to using generic rigs, um, which is what this particular kit does. Uh, down the road when we start replacing characters, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to replace the main character in this game and customize it with your own, your own character. this kit load and we'll get going. Nice thing about this kit is it already has um, a lot of the uh, editor extensions that you need from the package manager um, with it. It'll just put those in there for you. You don't need to go in and add them later. Um, things like uh, poly brush and pro builder are ready to go. Um, so once this loads up it's going to say import. We'll say yes and we will import it into our project. Import that in. Change the quality, that's fine. <coughs> it might take a minute for this to import everything. Um, one of the cool things about this kit, too, if you're interested in, um, if you go to learn.unity.com, I think I mentioned this last class. But there's a ton of video tutorials for this. So if you just come into learn.unity.com and then go 3D game kit, there's a ton of tutorials on how to use this particular kit. They have a whole section here on 3D game kit Lite on just how to use this one. Things like um, you know editing with ProBuilder, organizing your scene, game boundaries, adding gameplay, game commands, pressure pads, uh, indicating progress to a player, UI, enemies, checkpoints, restoring health, and teleporting. A lot of good stuff in there you use. Um, these uh, commands with pressure pads, pretty cool. Like little switches and triggers you can activate. Um, pretty nice. Okay. So, okay, so this is installed. And inside this scene, first thing I do is if we go to the scenes folder, it has a template scene right here. I'm gonna double click that and open that up. I'm not gonna save this. 
And in this template scene, it has a lot of kind of the starter bits that you need. Um, it's got the main character and all her stuff, as well as a floor to play on. Um, it even has um, a cinema machine camera in here, um, just some different stuff. Um, kind of nice to use this as your framework, um, but we don't want to overwrite it. It's nice to keep it here so you can refer back to it if you need to. Um, so the easy thing to do is just save it as another scene and put it in your own scenes folder. And then we'll just customize this scene and make that our, our start scene. Um, if we look at our character really quickly, um, whichever way the blue arrow is facing is kind of the direction she'll be facing when the game begins, right? So if we look at this, it looks like this. I believe this blue arrow at the bottom is where she's going to be facing. Uh, but one quick way to test that is first let's save this scene. Let me go ahead and file, save as. And I'll just save it as my own scene. I'll put it in my own folder under assets, we'll just uh, in scenes. Let's call it uh, my scene. Save it. And then one quick way to test uh, which way she's facing is just to put a cube in there. So game object, 3D object cube. Um, and we could just put a cube probably right there. And I think that's where she's facing, but just to be safe, let's see. Looks like that, yeah, that blue arrow is kind of pointing forward right there. If I start the game, yep, just looking right at that, that cube, right? So you always want to find like uh, which way your character is facing and kind of build from there. Um, so usually I'll, you know, I'll throw a cube in and, and do so, just so I have a reference point of which way the character starts when the game starts. You know, if I'm constructing a level, I could use this as my start area and then start building off of there, right? Um, another thing I like to do is, you know, we are going to be using kind of a 100 by 100 area to, to kind of build our level within. Um, and one thing I like to do to kind of get that across is just use um, terrain to kind of map that out or just have a base that I can work from. Um, and I had a couple questions about, you know, how do we go down with terrain or how do we carve inwards with the rain? And you, you can't really do it unless you set up your terrain ahead of time. So first thing I'm gonna do is do that in my level. Um, I'm gonna come into my game object here. I'm gonna go down to uh, 3D object and go to terrain. And first thing I'll do is set up my terrain so it sits the boundaries of the level I'm trying to make, right? Um, and I can do that in my terrain options, this little gear on the side of my terrain. If I click that, if I go down, you'll see my terrain width and length are a thousand by a thousand right now. It's pretty big. Um, I'm gonna bring that down to like 150, a little bit bigger than the area I want. So 150 by 150 is probably pretty good. All right, that'll give me a nice kind of boundary to work within for my level. You don't want something too big unless you're building like a you know massive multiplayer game or something like that. Um, but if you're just designing a level, um, this is pretty good to work with um, and and just a heads up um, it doesn't have to go your level doesn't have to go every single space of the 100 by 100 right I just want it to sit within 100 by 100 right so more or less make it kind of envelop that area but it doesn't have to fill up every square inch of it right um, just have it you know so it travels along there so uh, you know to explain that let's say that this was my 100 by 100 area you know, we have our start area, maybe she kind of cruises around, snakes around, does something over here, comes up here, and ends up there, right? Or maybe it comes back a little bit or something. But just use that area to your advantage. It doesn't have to fill up every square inch, okay? Um, I want it to feel like it takes some time to get through, like a, like a, a level design, right? Um, but with my level here, or with this terrain set up, so this is a good kind of boundary for me to work from. Um, Let's say I wanted to go down with the terrain. So by default, when I click on my paint tools on terrain, um, you know, I go to raise, lower terrain, I can't lower the terrain right off the bat, right? If I hold shift and do it, I can't go down. But to do that, we need to pre-set up our terrain with that amount of depth in it to start and then move it down into position. So an easy way to do that is, you know, our terrain, our terrain is sitting on zero right now. And if I go into my terrain, paint terrain settings and the raise lower height, we also have set height, right? 
So let's say I wanted to have, you know, like a, a lake area in my game that I could jump into or whatever, or something I go down. Maybe I go down into a cavern or whatever it is, right? And I want to use terrain to do that, um, but I can't go down with terrain. Before, you kind of have to know this before you start designing your level, right? Um, but what you can do is if you come in a set height, we can say, hey, you know what? I want um, Ellen to travel down, we'll just say 30 height downwards, which is a pretty deep, deep depth, right? So I can just come in and give my terrain right off the bat 30 as its height, right? Flatten it. You'll notice it brings it up, when I flatten the entire terrain, it brings it up 30 units, right? So it went from zero up to 30, even though it still says zero because it is set to zero. The actual terrain is still at zero. So what I need to do now is because I went 30 up with my terrain, if I just set my position at negative 30, it's back at zero, but it has that depth built into it. So now I can push down into it, right? So really, if you want to go down with your terrain, all you have to do is preset some initial height or volume into that terrain flatten the whole thing out at that height, and then move it down, that whatever amount of units you added to it, move it down that amount of units, and it'll be zeroed out on your, your base level, okay? Does that make sense? Cool. Um, so what that does is essentially, now that I have this terrain in here, I can now come in with my raise and lower terrain, right? And if I just make a bigger brush here, oh, that's a little big, let's see. Going like this, if I hold shift, I can now go down with it because I've added that extra volume in there, right? Okay, so just something to think about with your, your levels. It, it kind of makes it nice having that volume in there, especially if you're using terrain. So you can, you know, get a little more creative with what's happening in the terrain. You don't have to just go up all the time. You can now go down or go into an area or whatever, right? Um, typically what I like to do is if I'm doing a level design, I'll start like that. And I'll just carve out, or whoops, I'll carve out like, you know, the area I kind of want my level to sit. Um, and this kind of gives you, you know, one of the one of the big things you want to think about, we haven't really got into this right now, but going forward in a game, depending on the level you're trying to do, um, you know, you, you want to think about vantage points. You want to think about, you know, distance and draw calls and all that kind of stuff, which we'll get into later. Um, and all that's optimization, but if you, if you start with a level like this, and then you just work on kind of you know adding some some distance stuff around the edges right here, right? Then you can really just sit your level all in the middle of this and be good to go. You don't have to worry about like anything in the distance or anything like that because you're working kind of in a canyon, right? Um, kind of a nice nice way to approach things. Um, I do it a lot actually for a lot of levels. I do. You can see as I go around here, I can just kind of easily you know just make some little mountains and whatever here. I can smooth all this out too to make it look better, but um, it's kind of nice to work from that. So you have like a, you know, if your level kind of sits inside here, you don't have to worry about the distance stuff. You don't have to worry about, well, how am I going to fill in all this stuff in the distance, right? You can just easily kind of work right off the bat from there. Um, I'll just come in here and I'll paint some of this up. And I think for this particular demo, I'll just start with this as the design. All right, so we've got our volume. That's great. I'll go smooth some of this out so it doesn't look so bad because it looks really awful. Um, to do that, I'll just come into my raised tool. I'll go smooth height. And I'll just make a big brush. Uh, opacity, oh. And just start smoothing this out, All right? You can see really quickly you can make a, a bad level look a little bit better just by coming in and smoothing things out. All right. All right. It took no time to do, and now I've got this nice volume to kind of play with for a level. Right? You can kind of start seeing things just when you experiment. That's all we're doing right now, too, is we're just experimenting. We're coming up with ideas for what we could possibly you know, do to make a cool level and whatever. And, this is just one technique I use just to, you know, kind of an interior canyon type design, um, I think always works pretty well, you know, and having those areas where you can go down instead of just across and up, um, it's just going to add a little more variety to your, your design. Um, one of the things I, I really like to do right off the bat is using, um, 
the set height thing, going back to the set height, um, instead of uh, you know setting the height at 30, which we initially just flattened the whole level out, once you're ready to go and you have your level kind of set, um, anytime you hold shift and left click, it's going to automatically set height for that level. Um, I'm sorry if you... Ah. So if you hold shift and left click, it'll sample the height of wherever you just clicked. And so it says, okay, that was a negative seven, whatever, right? So if I change my brush, right, I can now come in and paint at that negative seven, right? Or if I know that, hey, my world started at zero, right, I can come in and start back at zero where the character was and then start kind of building out or fleshing out my level from there. So we've got our little start area, right? Maybe she's got another area she's got to jump across to right here. And you know what? Let's maybe go down a little bit, like negative three. You know, she's got to jump down a little bit. And whatever, right? She comes over here. All right, you kind of play around with that. Uh, remember, if you want to use terrain for her to run on, just click on it and set it to environment. If you do that, and we can go ahead and just test this, right? So we'll start off, test it out. There she goes, right? So I've got a little level very, very quickly without doing too much work. I don't know if I can make that. No, it's not happening. Um, it's something easily to work from. You know, now I've got something that I can come in here and say, okay, this is cool. Now, one of the cool things, too, about using a... Um, you know, a canyon type design is we could come in with, let's say, a plane. So if I go into Pro Builder here, Tools, open up Pro Builder, go to my Pro Builder window. Um, if I made just a plane, if I go to plane and say build, I could make this a death layer. Just expand it really big. Let's put it like right there. Maybe we drop it down a little bit. All right, but really quickly, you could come in and really make a, a really quick uh, design where, let's say, that's our death level, or maybe it's a little bit higher, or whatever. It's kind of nice when you have the terrain kind of protrude through things. It's like a really quick way to just add a lot of detail to your level. Um, but let's say we did something like that, right? We'd easily make this a death layer, which I believe there already is a death layer. There's a death volume right here. So we could just find where that is. And looks like it's set to, what's the height of this guy? So we've got negative 20. If I just take this value and just move it to my death volume. Or I could just turn that off and add the script to this death volume right here. I could just say add component, death volume. All right, and then I could, let's see if I go to my death volume here, set this to collider. Where's collider at? There it is, collider. So theoretically, if she falls down into this white stuff, she should die, right? So here, oh, let's try to get across there. Oh, oh, no, she's still alive. What's going on here? Oh, I think I need a collider on it. Hold on. Uh, box collider, box collider is trigger. Okay, let's add one to that. So this one needs a uh, collider. There we go. And for my collider, let's see. Oh, you know, the collider's a little big. <laughs> So we can change that, but um, to, to fix that, you just need to make it a collider. So actually what I would do, I, I probably wouldn't put the collider on this plane. Um, let's go ahead and remove the, actually we'll keep it, but we will take that off. What I'll do is I will make a box collider um, for that to sit on. So if I came in and said, hey, game object, 3D object cube, and made this bigger, the same size as my little plane down there, Get it generally in the same area right there and made it the same right above the height right there like that there we go we could then say that is a trigger and add a death volume to that 
make it a collider, and we'll turn its mesh renderer off. <coughs> On the, the plane I have in here, I'll just go ahead and remove that death volume. It should be good. So on this, let's just make sure this is going on. Let's come down here, let's just jump in. Oh, still not getting it. What's going on here? Okay. Let's trigger. Let's see. Got a box collider. Let's see what's going on with their other death line. Oh, they have two in here. Okay. Set to collider, untag. Okay. Let's go back here. So it looks like I need two box colliders in here. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Um, let's go add another one. We'll go add box collider. Seems like that's all that's needed. Let's see. Try this again. She not dying. Hold on. Um, oh, it's because wait, no, where's she at right now? Let's see. And a lot of times you can pause your level and see exactly what's going on. I'm not sure why she's not dying, but let's see what's up. So let's zoom in on Ellen. Ellen is on top of the box collider right now. For some reason, she doesn't want to die. Um, let's see. Why is that? So we've got our cube. Right here. Oh, is it above? Is it below the? Oh, I think it's below it. Hold on. Let's see. Script okay, all's good. Set to collider. Hold on, let's look at the the original death volume. Uh, right. I have an audio and they have this. Okay, this should all be good. Untag static collider collider. What am I missing here? Let's see. Let's trigger. Box miner, box miner. Death volume. Set to collect. Okay. Alright, let's see what's up here. Why she's not dying? Let's see. Interesting. Does anybody else see what's going happening here? <laughs> it's set up exactly the same way. Uh, yet she's not dying. Maybe I'm crazy here. But in this death volume, we've got a box collider and a box collider, and a death volume script. Got is trigger right. So I did that. So if I go to mine, my cube, I've got is trigger, right? I've got two box colliders the exact same way. Whoa, what am I? What am I missing here? It's all set to collider. That's all good. This doesn't make any sense. Um, all good. 
What's that? Uh, yeah, I think she should. Yeah, she does. Ellen? Oh, yeah, wait, can't she? Yeah, she's damage roll. Yeah, she's all good. Uh, let's see. Damage receivers. On the message receivers. No, she's good. On death. Ellen, damn, yeah, this is all good. Interesting. Um, what's that? Oh, here's the death layer that they have, right? Well, let's see. Does their death? Let's see if their death volume works. Let's turn that on. Turn mine off, and see where that's at, right? So this one is set to. I know what it is. I know what it is. They're by okay. I got it. So they actually have two colliders on here. They have one that's a trigger. Um, so if we look at their death volume, kind of hard to see here, but let me just zoom out. There we go. So if we look at the their colliders, right? We have one that's a trigger, which is this first one, which is the the main cube, right? Um, and then we have another one, which is the the actual collider itself that you like run into. And one is smaller than the other one. I have mine at the same size right now. So it's just, she's just hitting against it. I need to make the other one a little bit smaller so she goes into it and hits it. So um, if we look at the size right here, you can see, right? Um, or I'm sorry, the center, which is negative two and, and zero, right? So if I go into mine, I should be able to do the same thing. Um, they're just kind of offsetting them. Um, so if I go, where is plane? Close this death volume. I think it should be right on this. Let's see. Cube. All right, so we've got two box colliders. The center. Um, let's go ahead and make the center negative two on this guy. Oh, that's a little too much. Let's bring it in a little bit. Let's do it like right there. There we go. All right. Now let's play it. It should work. There we go. That's what it was. You have to go into it. That's 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 the problem. So, anyways, yeah, it does work. Um, it was just uh, had an issue. And basically, what I did was, so if you're creating your own death colliders, um, you need to make sure that it has a trigger that she can actually hit or interact with. So a collider that she interacts with as well and then one that is a trigger that she can be sitting in that activates when she crosses that threshold and I just offset the 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 colliders to do so right so I've got one you can see there's my main collider right and then I've got my um, uh, what do you call it the the trigger collider above that I could change that if I needed to also All right I'll remove that all right, okay, so that's good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move this down to the floor right there, and I'll turn off the mesh renderer. So now if I jump down into this lava, we've got a sense of danger, right? We can fall into this lava and die. So she's running, all is well, and dead, right? Maybe a little high, but we'll fix that. Um, let me just bring that down a little bit. This one. I'm just going to take the mesh collider off. Let's just test the, the height of that death. She comes down, jump, and dead. dead. All right, cool. Um, I can probably bring it up just a shade more, too. So 
So run down here and dead. All right, perfect. There we go. She dies in the lava. All right. Um, you know, so obviously we want to make a little, make that a little dangerous, right? So I'll make it like an acid pool or something like that. Um, so let's go find, let's see if there's anything on the asset store we can use. I'll come in here and I'll just look for, I don't know, acid water or just acid. Let's see if there's something free we can use here. Uh, oh, nothing free. Let's see. Acid. Free assets. Oh, let's see. Let's see if there's like a water texture. Water texture. Stylized texture. Free water. There we go. We'll use that one. Let's we'll turn it green, right? So I'll get this guy, download it, import. Looks great. Did I get it? Stylized water texture. Great. Go to materials. Awesome. All right, that's gonna look great. Go into my scene, and I've got this plane. So here's my death layer. Let me just death layer. I'll call this plane acid. All right, and I'll just drop my stylized water on there. Right. Now, one of the things we can do to this texture is we can. Um, does this have a? No, this doesn't have any movement. We can do a UV movement on it um, just by getting a simple script. I'm just going to go into that texture and just change it to green, like we we're talking about. So let's just make it more of a green texture. And a lot of times, if you're making your own games, this is something you want to do. Is just get in the, the habit of modifying existing stuff. It's just going to make life go much smoother and quicker, especially if you're developing your own stuff. Um, this particular texture, you know, I could come in and uh, where's my I go to this material here. What do we got? We got a mission. Back to this material really quickly. Stylize one more texture. It. There we go. I have some emission in there too, which is kind of nice. Um, I could edit these in like Photoshop if I wanted to make that a little more greener or something. I could come in um, to Photoshop. It looks like they gave an emissive that I wasn't it wasn't using, but I put that in there. A lot of times you got to look at what they give you inside the uh, the actual asset to see if it's usable. But I could just open this like in Photoshop. So if I went to you know here and said, "Hey, let's edit this with Photoshop," ah. I could just change the hue on this to something like green. You can only get so far with it in Unity with their slider. But if I came into Photoshop and open this, I could make it like full green, make this a little more dangerous, right? So on here, once it's in Photoshop, I could just do something like, hey, let's make this asset, right? So we want to use this image, adjustments, hue, saturation. We could come in here and just change the hue to something a little more, more acid-like, right? And then just save it. Go back to Unity. That looks much better, right? So now she's got real danger, right? If she falls, it's acid. We'll fall on it, we'll die, right? Awesome. All right, now, one of the other things is, you know, let's say we wanted to have that, a simple way to make that moving um, in Unity. We could get a script for UV scrolling. Um, and you could find those very, very they're really, really common um, on the, uh, have something like that as it's down there. Um, to find that script, we just have to go to look online and pretty much everything you do in Unity, if you're trying to figure out how to add little scripts to things or whatever, always look online. Um, just type in something like UV scrolling 
uh, material unity All right and somebody has written something for it right animated scrolling texture here's one right here there you go here's a whole script right here or something how to do it right uh, or we can even find uh, there you go something like that copy it go into unity anytime you need to make a new script you just right click say create go up to C sharp script and we'll just call this UV scrolling I think is what they called it we'll see double click it it's gonna open up Visual Studio we can paste in that code we found online and save it as a script so this should open up right here Um, you always want to use Visual Studio for your uh, script editing, especially with Unity. Um, should load up. Should load up the uh, solution. Should open up the script. There we go. So I'm just going to copy all this and just replace with what I found. Example class. We can call this uh, UV scrolling. This is the name of the actual file. Ah, whoops. Right here. UV scrolling. And we will save it. And then we will close this. Back here. Should update that script. That looks good. So I'm just going to click on my acid. And add my oh, where's that acid add my script I just made UV scrolling there you go it's got a scroll speed and render I'm not sure what render is but we'll see what's up with that let's see if that works there you go all right so pretty simple right it's pretty quick but um, a lot of times what you can do is use multiple layers if you're doing something like water. Um, so have like a transparent layer on top of this layer that goes at a different speed, you know, so you get this nice kind of parallax effect. Um, so you can come in and, you know, we'll reduce the speed of that, that water. We'll just take that down to, I don't know, something like 09 maybe, 0.09. See how that goes. There you go. That's a little better. Right. Something like that. And if I did want to add more detail to that, I could, like I said, we could duplicate that layer. So in here, uh, with my acid layer, right, if I made another layer on top of it, and just called it, uh, let's do like acid 2. So we'll just duplicate this one, and we'll bring it up just a little bit. Right, so bring it up like right on top of it like that. And if I made like a transparent texture, which in this this particular texture it looks like they have this nice uh, right here, this uh, emissive texture, um, I could easily come in and make this like a transparent texture in Photoshop. Um, or if I just wanted to paint my own texture in Photoshop, I could do that. Um, but we'll use this one as an example. I could just go to this texture open it up in Photoshop I'll show you making a quick uh, transparent texture coming here so something like this is pretty good image adjustments if I just change that to green and then let's say we just want to get rid of all the black uh, we're going to, have to duplicate the layer Turn the background layer off and I'll just come in here and do get rid of this black uh, which I could do with, where's that? Which one? Kill all that. All right, so let's say we just want to use that. And we want to make this like a greenish color, right? So fill all that in. Well, did that work? No. There's a fill, 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 fill. There we go. All right. 
because it has a bit transparent background, you see this little checkerboard pattern, I could save this out as a transparent texture. Um, file, export, export as a PNG. That loads up. And I'll just call this uh, transparent acid. All right. In Unity, now that I have this transparent texture, anytime you have a transparent texture, you need to let Unity know it is transparent in its import settings, but just saying, hey, it's alpha is transparent. I might be going a little quick here, but that's cool. Like, it's going to be recorded on a video, so if you need to refer back to it, all good. Um, but I've got this little transparent texture. I'll come in here, and under materials, let's just make another one. Create a material. And we'll just call this water highlights, or acid water highlights, or whatever, acid highlights. Um, my material settings, instead of opaque, I'll make this uh, transparent. That should work. And then for our texture, we'll just grab the texture that I just made, which is right here. Throw that in there. Something like that looks good. Maybe I'll use the normal maps that they had, which were there. Sure, something like that looks good. And maybe I'll even use the, the mission too. All right, transparent. And we'll throw this new texture onto the texture above the one that I was working on. So acid one, put it on there. All right. So with acid one, because we have this little script already on here, we can change the speed. So let's say we make acid one like five or four. Maybe it's texture, let me go ahead and mess with this a little bit. Play. You get kind of a nice parallax effect, right? Just layering two textures like that goes a long way, especially just you know with things like water, just to kind of give it more of a, a fluidous appearance, right? Um, just a, a kind of a quick way, or you know, a quick way to do that. Um, all right, also kind of adds a little depth to it. Um, and a lot of times in games too, you'll see they, they, they like, especially in like uh, the Nintendo games, like Mario and stuff, they go nuts with layering uh, transparent textures, especially on water and things of that nature. Um, there'll be a ton of that in the games. Um, but, you know, now that I have like a death layer and I've got this little level, I'm starting to go here, you know, now we can actually start adding, you know, real danger and functionality to this level. Um, because I have this little acid layer here and it's on a material, you know, I could make other little acid pools around the level that maybe aren't down there, you know, where you die. That could also be their own death layers, right, that you could die in. Um, so we could, you know, mess around with that. We could also put things like, you know what, that acid layer is cool, but what if we gave it like a fog of doom down there so you really know it's, it's scary, right? Um, to do that, I would probably come into my particle effects. And if I just game object effects particle system. Now when we you know first made our, our first particles in this class we just did kind of basic particles but one of the things you can do with particle systems is also have them travel on like a, a cube if you make a cube. So in its rendering settings if we go to its shape and instead of a cone if we set that to a box right it'll give us this little box shape that we can then edit to put these particles wherever we want. So I can say hey on the scale of my box let's go ahead and make this Hundred by hundred. Oh, whoops! I'm sorry. Uh, one hundred by one hundred. All right. So now we've got this little area to use. I could then move this where it needs to sit. Uh, it might be a little small. Let's make it a little bit bigger, like one hundred twenty by one hundred twenty. And it'll instantiate particles all along the size of this 
particular volume, right? So you can see now that I have this giant volume, it's putting particles everywhere. So if I wanted those to be like little acid bubbles or whatever, right, I could do that really easily with just one particle effect. Or if I wanted it to be like a hovering fog down there, of like acid smoke, I could change the speed of these particles to say, hey, you know what, let's go really, really slow. Let's turn that start speed down, like really down, but barely coming up. And I could make their size much, much bigger. Right, so something like that. Right, and then we just—it's just a matter of coming into its rendering settings and changing the amount of them. So I could come down to the emission and say, "Hey, you know what? Let's make uh, 50 of these things." Right, let's change their color over lifetime to something like when they start, they're green. And when they end, they're maybe like a darker green. But when they fade out, they're zero. When they fade in, they're zero. And then maybe they're never fully see through, right? So then you can get this nice effect of having some type of you know dangerous kind of fog down there with your. Uh, with your, you know, noxious liquid, right? So, you know, just kind of layering and, and putting things in your levels is really going to add a lot to the actual look and feel of what you're trying to do just by doing just little things like that, like layering in some particle effects and messing with some scrolling textures and just kind of layering those pieces in. It's really, really going to go a long way. Um, let's see if I can get her down there and see what it looks like when we die. You know, it's pretty good, right? Um, you could come in too with, you know, duplicating that particle system. So we've got this gas. Um, but if we came in here and said, you know what, let's go ahead and just duplicate that. And again, this is just layering stuff, right? If I duplicate that and then I made these ones really small. Um, let's see, their start size will make really tiny these guys they'll be more like little bubbles on this right so I'll come in here and I'll turn their speed up a little bit to a little bit higher and we'll mess around with their color settings to be a little more visible And just mess around with the variables like we've done before when we made fire. If we came in and said, hey, on our uh, start size, maybe we're going to do random between two, you know, so they're bigger and smaller. All right, and kind of play around with that. All right, so we came in here. And we go down and look at that. And it automatically starts looking even a little more dangerous just by layering in some extra little effects, right? So th those go a long way when you use those. Um, you know, it helps the player know that, you know, obviously that's probably dangerous down there and I don't want to go down there, right? Um, so play around with that kind of stuff in your levels, whether it be lava or if you have any of that, that's fine. Um, but mess around with those, those, uh, those death volumes, you know, it adds that sense of danger, you know, for this particular level. So just kind of, you know, messing around up here, I'd probably come in and add some type of jump thing over here. So I'd come in and with Pro Builder, I could come in and Tools, Pro Builder Window, go ahead and dock this on the side right here. I could come in with a new shape. We'll go with a uh, cube, build it. And with this guy, I could just start making, let's say, some little platforms that Ellen has to run on, right? So let's do something like this. There we go. These are always fun, right?
platform session right here, and then maybe over here, I go into my terrain and I say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring this back to reality here, right? remember to set your items to environment if she can traverse them all right so these guys right here make sure they're set on the right layer so environment and come in Just adding little things like that, you know, just add that extra level of, you know, complexity to your level. And it's up to you guys whatever you're going to do. I'm just kind of spitballing up here, just coming up with stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, typically this is kind of how I construct things as I start going. You know, I'll start with terrain. They'll start layering and pro builder stuff, adding in effects here and there. Just kind of keep iterating as you go. Um, but this is a good kind of starting point to build something. Um, and then from here... You know, really go in and start adding more functionality. Um, next thing I'm going to do is get into uh, moving platforms. So right now, you know, I just use these little guys just to show like a some type of bridge type structure. But let's say we wanted to have a platform that you know maybe she gets over here and there's a little platform in the distance that moves up and down that she wants to jump on, right? So it's pretty easy to do, um, and it just has to do with creating an animator for a particular object. There's nothing really complicated about it. Um, I can literally take this guy and I can, let's just make him a little bit bigger here, something like that. So let's say this kind of came back and forth, right? And it was something that we could use to get over to this little guy right here, right? But obviously we can't make that jump unless we get on this thing. We need to have it go back and forth, right? So what we could do is just literally create an animator for this. So if we have our little platform right here, I could just come in here. Let me just rotate this so it's something to get onto. Click on this guy. We'll call it a, I don't know, moving platform. All right. To make this guy move back and forth, all I have to do is open my animator window. So I'll come to Window, General Animation. Click on animation, and I'll go ahead and dock this underneath my scene just so I can see it. Uh, I like to sometimes put it down in a tab right here so I can just go back and forth between my project and animation. Uh, but you'll notice with that selected, it says begin animating the platform, create an animator and an animation clip. So we could create those or just click the create button to automatically do it. I'll click create. That's going to tell us, okay, where do we want to put this stuff? Well, we'll put it inside our scene, so assets folder. And let's keep it in the root for assets now. I'll just call it moving platform 01. All right, say save. In here, I'm just going to turn it to animated mode. And I'll set it start position, which will be right there. And then we'll say every second it moves over here. And then it sits. For a second, maybe two seconds, it sits, and then it goes back a second to the beginning. All right, so something like that, right? Goes, goes back, goes, 
goes back, right? Or we could have it where it sits at this part again. So maybe when it comes back, we just give it a little bit of, of sit time. So we have it sit right there for a second. So then when this plays, goes, it sits, goes back and sits, goes and sits, goes back and sits, right? And with this, now that we have it set up, we go to our level, you see it's already working, right? out too fast underneath me there. Might have to add a sticky material to the uh, platform so she doesn't slide off. Well, let's, just, let's just see if I get on it fast enough. Oh, there's no cover here. What we can do is you'll notice she flew right off that thing. It kind of spun out from underneath her. We can add a physics material to this that makes it super sticky. So we can do that just like we done before with the bouncy stuff. If we come in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's make this so this platform's super sticky for her. Um, under its physics material, we could come in and say, create. Uh, where's that physics material? And let's call this sticky. All right, friction combined. We want static friction. We want a lot of friction. Like, let's see, bouncy combine. Let's go to. Let's try that. Then we'll put this. If we go to the object, add that on there. Material. Let's see if that helps us out. Still not working. Hold on. Let me let this uh, platform hold on. I think my animation's going a little too fast. Let's come here really quickly. Let's just let this hold for a little bit longer so she has time. I think her animation just doesn't have enough time to recover. Um, so if we come down here and just pull that out. Time to recover. Let's do that. Down here. <coughs> there we go. Oh man, it's not working too well. Let's see. Uh, maybe I'm missing something. Hold on. If I go to sticky. Kidding me? <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, 
Oh man, still having some issues there. Hold on, let's see. Um, let's see what's up with this. They might have a preset uh, thing. Let's see. Colliders, props, avoid. Characters, set dressing. Still having some issues. Okay, well, I'll figure that out. I don't know why that's doing that. Um, hold on a second. Let me go ahead and turn this off for now. 